Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, preliminary results of Peruvian election released, leftist Pedro Castillo is in the lead. Twelve members of the Communist Party of Kenya to be charged with failing to observe social distancing. Israeli forces continue to crack down as Palestinian elections approach. And in our video section, we take a look at the protests and demonstrations around the world on the second anniversary of Julian Assange's arrest. In our first story, the preliminary results of the Peruvian elections are in and Jose Pedro Castillo of the left-wing Free Peru political party leads in the first round. According to the results announced by National Office of Electoral Process, ONP, as of April 12th, Castillo had obtained 18.9% of the votes cast. His lead upset predictions made by opinion polls till recently. Following Castillo in the second place is Keiko Fujimori of the far-right popular force with 13.2% of the votes. She is followed by Hernando de Soto of the center-right Go On Country with 11.9% and Rafael Lopez Aliaga of the right-wing Popular Renewal with 11.8%. The ONP declared that as a result show a technical tie between the three second-place contenders, it can only declare an opponent for Castillo for the second round once all the votes are counted. The official results are expected to be released in the first week of May. Consolidated estimates by independent pollsters nonetheless indicate that Fujimori, daughter of the former right-wing dictator Alberto Fujimori, is likely to be Castillo's contender for the second round, which is likely to be held on June 6th. In the legislative elections, both the official results announced by the ONP and estimates made by pollsters indicate a divided house for the Congress. Eleven parties are likely to have representation in the unicameral parliament and none with an absolute majority. Free Peru, Popular Force and Popular Action parties will have the most number of seats. In our second story, we go to Kenya where 12 members of the Communist Party of Kenya who were arrested on Wednesday last week will be charged with failing to observe social distancing under the Public Health Act. The decision was made by the Director of Public Prosecution and the date for the hearing was fixed for July 7th, according to a Facebook post by the party. On Monday, the hearing was postponed for a second time. The CPK members who were arrested by the police in a raid at the party headquarters conducted without a warrant. The raid occurred after the police broke up a protest organized by party members and the Hotel and Entertainment Workers Union against the unscientific COVID-related measures imposed by the Uhuru Kenyatta government. Trade unions and communists have maintained that the policies have disproportionately affected the working class. The protesters demanded a suspension of rent, compensation for pandemic-induced job losses, food subsidies and for the government to halt negotiations for a loan package with the IMF. The loans, the protesters claimed, will only benefit the elite while the masses will have to once again foot the bill of pushing Kenya further into debt. In our next story, ahead of the upcoming general elections in Palestine, Israeli security forces conducted a series of raids in the occupied West Bank and East Jerusalem on Monday. 28 Palestinians were arrested in these raids, most of whom were prominent members of political parties such as Fatah and Hamas. Several well-known civil society figures were also arrested. Among the important Hamas members arrested was, the, was Mona Kadan, a former political prisoner of Israel for 76 years. It also includes Hamas leader Anas Rastas, Palestinian legislator Omar al kawasme and Hamas member and head of the Palestinian Scholars League, Sheikh Mustafa Shawar. According to reports, Israeli forces also raided several Palestinian homes, violently assaulted the residents and damaged property but did not make any arrests. The violent raids by the Israeli forces led to clashes with villages. Security forces responded with the use of tear gas as a result of which some villagers later had to seek treatment. A large number of the detainees belong to Hamas. Hamas leader Mossaduddin said in a statement that the raids reflect Israel's criminal and terrorist identity in besieging democracy for Palestinians. He also added that since the start of the elections, Israeli forces have threatened the leaders and family members. He called upon the international community to stand up to what he called fascism that has no parallel in the world. In our video section today, we take a look at the demonstrations and vigils organized by supporters of Julian Assange, protesting his continued imprisonment. April 11th this year marks two years since the arrest of Assange from the Ecuadorian embassy in London. He first served time for jumping bail and is now held under judicial remand as he waits US attempts to extradite him. The 11th of April marked two years since the arrest of Julian Assange. Assange was arrested from the Ecuadorian embassy in London in 2019 and has been held at the high security prison in Belmarsh. Commemorating the day, progressives around the world organized demonstrations demanding his release while also opposing his extradition to the United States. The extradition request against him was denied by a magistrate's court on January the 4th but he continues to be held in judicial remand as the prosecutors representing the United States appeal in higher courts against the decision. Assange is being indicted in the United States under the infamous Espionage Act and the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. He faces a total of 18 federal criminal charges against him, including espionage and cybercrimes, 
which together carry a maximum sentence of 175 years. Julian Assange is being strung up and tried for protecting all of us, right? Because they're not inherently after Julian. They're here to take our rights away. They're here to remove our civil liberties and make it so we don't even have the ability to organize or know what is happening here. Protesters demonstrated all across London in an open deck bus carrying signs which read Free Julian Assange or Don't Extradite Julian Assange. As it's there's no charges against him and it's, I, I feel he should be freed immediately. I think he's, it's uh, arbitrary detention, I think is um, the term the European Court of Human Rights have come up with for it. And, and I think they're right. You're just detaining someone because he's revealed truths that are inconvenient to the, a, lot, a lot of the Western states' activities in places like Iraq and Afghanistan mistreatment of people which is really really are war crimes and because he's revealed details that are uncomfortable then he's been in prison for it and that's really the behavior of a despotic country and I'd, I'd prefer Britain didn't behave like that that's not what I, what I believe British values are. Despite the fact that Assange faces no criminal prosecution in the country the British courts continue to incarcerate him at the behest of the United States. The Joe Biden administration continues to pursue the Trump era policy of prosecuting Assange and the WikiLeaks for exposing US war crimes in Iraq and Afghanistan. In the United States, demonstrations were held at the Ecuador Embassy as well as the Department of Justice in Washington DC. Many have been raising concerns over Assange's deteriorating physical and mental health, which were grounds for the London court to reject his extradition. His condition has only worsened inside Belmarsh in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. In November 2020, a major COVID-19 outbreak in Belmarsh was reported by family and close associates of Assange. During the trial, expert witnesses have repeatedly pointed out that he is a suicide risk if the threat of extradition continues to loop. In Australia, Assange's home country, a major campaign has been underway to get the government to intervene. The conservative Scott Morrison government has been accused of exhibiting sheer indifference even as several parliamentarians have been demanding counsellor assistance for him that has been denied so far. Assange's family has also been working tirelessly to shore up support. Between February and March this year, Assange's father John Shipton led a home run for Julian tour across Australia to rally support for the campaign for his release. In the meanwhile, Stella Morris, Assange's fiancée, has been fundraising for his legal aid in the continuing extradition appeals against him. Days before the anniversary of his arrest, she called on people around the world to participate in vigils and demonstrations on Sunday. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.